Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Make It Make, where I always try to encourage you guys, if you can't get it to make, then make it make. So go ahead and grab your pens and papers because I have a lot of information to share with you starting this Amish Canning 101 series, how to water bath everything. Welcome back for part two of the Amish Canning 101 series, how to water bath everything. Um, first of all, before I even get started, of course, I have to start off with uh, the disclaimer. Everything in this entire series, in fact, any rebel canning recipe that you get anywhere is not going to be USDA, NCHFP, or FDA approved. So when you do these recipes, they are going to be entirely at your own risk. With that said, I truly feel that there are so many people around the world and communities that have been water bathing everything and they've been doing it right, which is why I'm doing this series. So also before we begin, I want to just tell you from the bottom of my heart, guys, you know, thank you so much for sharing your personal uh, stories and memories. Um, it's just been an absolute honor and pleasure to be able to sit down and read them. I'm sorry I haven't gotten to all the comments. I'm getting there, uh, but just... It just warms my heart just that you guys are so vulnerable to share these beautiful, just beautiful memories and, and, and stories. And it just, I don't know, it warmed my heart and thank you so much for sharing them. And of course, I can't not speak about my favorite canning lid company, which is the Fajaris Company. I absolutely love them. I've had people reach out to me before, um, but this company just felt right because of their customer service. And honestly, they were like the only people willing to have an actual phone conversation with me. And it felt very personable. And I love that. So great canning lid company. If you use my promo code, you save 10% off every time you make a purchase. All right, so let's go over a couple of things in the first video that I got a lot of questions for, and I figured why not just address it in the video instead of individually answering the same question uh, multiple times. So one of the questions that I got was for canning meat, and did she can the meat raw? Yes, the meat was canned raw. And I gave the recipe for quarts, and it was a processing time for three hours. Yes, pints are three hours as well, which brings me to my next point that is very important and I wanted to share this with you guys. When I am giving an Amish canning recipe or any type of rebel canning recipe, do not assume, okay, that for a pint recipe that it's half the timing from a quart recipe, okay? Please do not do that. Um, a lot of the times what I see is that when it's a quart recipe, oftentimes the timing for pints will be the exact same as a quart, okay? So I just wanted to clarify that. If I do not have a pint recipe, I will tell you that I just don't have it for pints. But please, please do not cut your timing in half, okay? Also, if you follow the community tab on my channel, you'll, you'll notice that I posted a picture on uh, the definitions of what hot pack and cold pack mean in the with the Amish recipes. And I'm gonna post that picture here again. The reason why this is so important is because people were asking in the first video, what does hot pack and cold pack mean? Because they were on her recipes, those nice recipe cards that I showed you guys at the end. Um, there was hot pack and cold pack. So let me just tell you again what that means. Cold pack means water bath, okay? Anytime you see, uh, if I get any more recipes from her or any other recipes that I put out there, when I say cold pack, that means water bath. Hot pack means the open kettle method. All right, finally, let's get into the good stuff. We're gonna be talking about potatoes. I'm super excited to pass on these recipes uh, to you guys. First of all, I just want to say we're the first recipe is going to be the for the white potatoes. And can we just please stop and take a moment and admire her absolutely gorgeous potatoes? When I was down there in her pantry, I could not believe how beautiful they were. I mean, just so clear and just perfect. And they have the skins on them. So um, we're going to be going over that today. All right, so as you notice in the picture for her potatoes, she has some skins on them. But I wanted to point out that the skins on her potatoes are really thin. 
the potatoes that I buy, like the Idaho potatoes that I buy from the store, they're really thick. So for me, when I do this recipe, I don't think I'll be leaving, leaving the skins on. If I have a potato that has thinner skins, then I wouldn't mind leaving the skins on. That's just me. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. I just kind of noticed that with the picture and with the potatoes that I have. And the recipe is super, super simple. When I was doing the recipe myself, um, a different recipe, not hers, I it was just a very lengthy process with the brine, blanching, and then cooking. Just And then they, they turned out horrible. I have an eye card here or here that I'll put for you to show you the things I'll never can again. So this gives me hope, guys. This recipe gives me so much hope. Let's go over it. So getting into the recipe, okay, for your white potatoes, you're going to cut down your potatoes and you're going to wash them really well until the water runs completely clear, okay? You want to wash them very, very well. And then for quarts, you are going to add one tablespoon of vinegar and one teaspoon of salt and you're going to fill up the jar up to the neck uh, with water and you're going to cold pack it which means water bath it for two hours and remember guys when i say water bath it and start your timing at two hours it's not at a simmer it's not at a chatter it's at a rolling boil and then start your timing for two hours now for pints it's going to be one tablespoon of vinegar and a half a tablespoon of salt and cold pack it, water bath it for two hours. Now, here's the thing, guys. If you do not want to add your vinegar, whether it be for the pints or for the quarts, the processing time is going to be for three hours, okay? So if you do not want to add your vinegar for the pints or the quarts, the processing time for both pints and quarts is going to be for three hours. Sorry that I'm like really saying pints, quarts, and stuff like that, but I just really wanna make sure that I am communicating the recipe as, as well as possible, okay? I, I'm really noticing that when you don't add vinegar to something in these Amish recipes, then you're gonna usually add like another hour of processing time. All right, so I have a recipe for sweet potatoes in a light syrup. Uh, I do want to tell you that when I came across this recipe, it's very vague. A lot of the recipes, the Amish recipes that I have received, they're just very vague. They don't really go into details. And sometimes they don't tell me if it's for a quart or even if it's for a pint. And um, it's a little frustrating for me, but I'm assuming just because it's the books that they have within their own community that everybody sort of knows how to do it. So I am going to give you the recipe. Again, it's up to you on whether or not you feel safe doing it, but here is the recipe. Four canned sweet potatoes in a syrup. What you wanna do is you wanna have two cups of water, one cup of sugar, and you're gonna put that over heat until all the sugar is melted down. Then you're gonna cook your sweet potatoes uh, just enough, you're gonna cook them just enough to scrape off the skins. This is a no skin on a potato recipe. It's not like the white potatoes were, you saw how she had some skins on them, okay? So no skins. Then you're gonna cut up the potatoes, you're gonna put them in your jars, and you're gonna fill up the jars with uh, the brine covering up the sweet potatoes. And then you're gonna cold pack it, which means water bath, for one hour. So that is the recipe. So it's gonna be cold pack for one hour. All right, so that's what I have for potatoes, and that's mainly what this video is about. I wanted to ask you guys, are you interested in, in me making videos on making some Amish meals, okay? We can start a series on that because I have so many recipes on how to make Amish meals. It's coming out of my ears. Let me know if that's something that you guys are interested in seeing, and if there is enough interest, I'll absolutely start making some videos on that as well. Also, you wanna stay to the end of the video because if you're interested in some beautiful Amish like quotes that I've been reading through the books and just some things that they've shared that's really positive and beautiful. One of the things was how to preserve a husband. I thought that that was really, really sweet. Uh, definitely stay to the end and I will share all those wonderful quotes with you. Guys, as always, I just wanna say thank you so much for giving me your precious, absolute precious time in watching my videos. You've blessed me so much. You have no idea. 
Um, and uh, thank you for all your encouragement, especially in moments that I feel a little discouraged by some other comments, but you know, it's a journey for me too. And it's just been a blessing to be able to, you know, be a creator and share this with you. Well, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, wait for the Amish canning part three. And as always, guys, take care and God bless. <laughs>